I went for a walk searching for spring amongst barren trees and on soggy footpaths. At a first glance, there was no sign of it. It's as if winter chose to stay for a few more days. Only if you look closely, you will see it. You will notice tiny buds beginning to swell on shrubs and plum trees waiting to blossom. Daffodils and crocuses and even rare dandelions appear amongst dried grass. Early spring winds and constant rainfall are keeping me mostly indoors these days. I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to answer some questions you asked me a couple of weeks ago. Perhaps I should introduce myself first. My name is Daria and I currently live in a village in the south of England. I was born in Latvia, a small country in northeastern Europe, and I moved to England when I was a teen. Then I lived in London for almost 11 years before moving out to the countryside. England was where I developed the most and I call this country my home, even though I still haven't lost my accent. The short answer is as simple as that, but to be honest, this is a bit of a touchy subject for me. There are so many layers to this, so let me know if you'd like a more expanded answer about this and about the sense of belonging and where is home. If that is something of interest, I will make a separate video. If I'm completely honest, I never planned to move to the countryside. I grew up and lived my whole life in the city, and all my activities and dreams were based around it. Then somehow I naturally found myself spending more time in nature. I moved a lot when I lived in the city, and one of the biggest criteria for my moves was living close to some sort of nature. A park, a river, somewhere with tall trees and water. For the most part of 2018-19, I was heavily depressed and went on long walks in the park and just stared at nature for hours when life seemed to crumble. That was still at the time when I thought that I was a city girl. When 2020 happened, I again wanted to escape. I wanted to go traveling, but for obvious reasons that didn't happen. I remember one time I was able to take a train to the seaside in summer. That, I believe, was one of the turning points. That day I took a long hike to the cliffs. It was so foggy you'd not be able to see past a couple of meters ahead. The fog melted into rain. And I walked and walked for hours. This was my first nature hike I ever did. I remember wildflowers growing on the rolling hills, fireweed meadows as far as the eye can see, and then the white cliffs. Water breaking against the rocks underneath, a lighthouse barely visible in the distance. There wasn't a soul around, of course, the weather was quite severe. It was eerie and magical and beautiful and I realized that I want more of this. I believe this was a turning point which made me realize that there is so much I haven't seen yet. In England, in nature... And if I were to talk about practical things, I wasn't able to move until about a year and a half later. I needed to get a driver's license, which I didn't need at all in the city. I had to get a car simply for the purpose of finding a new home, as a lot of these places I looked at weren't accessible by public transport. So I spent about a year trying to get the license during 2020 to 2021. Also, it was about saving money, and I always thought that countryside would be cheaper, but I guess because a lot of people started moving out of cities, that increased rental prices in the villages. I'm afraid to say I was one of those people who added to this issue. It took a while to adjust to a smaller village, as many things weren't as accessible as they were in London anymore. 
I really do believe that we as humans can adapt to anything. The most important thing is to check in with yourself from time to time and see if what you've adapted to is still serving you well. Sometimes we get too comfortable in our discomfort and that was how I felt in my last years in the city. Staying motivated on YouTube has definitely been a difficult process and I felt like giving up many times, but I simply love what I do and it keeps me moving and seeking new experiences. I had attempted YouTube years ago, going through many different niches and genres, but it never really went anywhere. I've given up many times and picked up again purely because I love making videos. I think one of the biggest things for me was understanding the purpose behind this. I didn't want to do this for any kind of gain and my first step was working and sorting out my priorities. I knew that any kind of gain, numerical, financial, it won't come right away or may not come for a very long time. I had to make sure that my motivation isn't fueled by things that I cannot control, but rather by the factors which are only solely up to me. What I can control is the content I create, my videos, the subjects I discuss, the beauty I see around. I simply like who I am when I seek out this beauty all around me. Of course, seeing positive response from others, views, likes, subscribers, that puts a smile on my face. My growth has been pretty slow and when I compare it to others, which you shouldn't do by the way, I can see that there are many channels which grew much faster in shorter period of time. But I like who I am when I create. I usually spend about a week on one video, but sometimes it may take longer depending on the subject or season. I love sharing beauty with others, connecting with like-minded people and reading your thoughts and stories and comments. I am also immensely curious to see how far this can go. I guess this is what keeps me going. If I had to give any advice, I'd say find what you love, find what you're curious about and do it for that love and curiosity, nothing else. I know it's easier said than done and I am constantly challenging my own opinion here, but this really is the only thing that will keep you going. YouTube is still one of the most visited platforms on the internet above Instagram and TikTok, so I think it will still be here for a while with new audiences and new subjects to discuss for time and time ahead. I loved arts and music for as long as I can remember. While no one in my family comes from an artistic background, I've always been the one to pursue a more artistic way of living as means of expression. I was a very impressionable child, highly sensitive and emotional, so art, music and writing always helped me with my self-expression. I kept journals and wrote songs which I sadly never shared with anyone, played piano, liked to draw a lot, made jewelry using beads, and also did many other things. I love creating anything from scratch, seeing something appear from nothing. Nature inspires me a lot these days, seeing seasons change from life to death to rebirth. I love classical literature. My favorite books are Count Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, Portrait of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I also love existentialist novels like 1984 by George Orwell, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, works of Haruki Murakami. And I love children's books, The Secret Garden and Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen, and many more. I get inspired a lot by visual art and movies. 
My favorite paintings are Fragonard's The Swing, Ivozovsky's Sea Landscapes, and Paintings of Women by John William Waterhouse. I've been working as a photographer and videographer commercially for a long time, ever since graduating from uni with a film degree. My dream job, though, would be to one day own a cozy coffee shop and roastery where I could cook, bake and make coffee for other people. I would make every corner of that coffee shop different, perfect for reading or for people watching from a big window. I'd make it quirky, full of character and antique furniture. That would be my absolute dream. This is a tough one. Honestly, I sometimes get so overwhelmed with life that I neglect myself and don't take care of myself enough. Sometimes the simplest form of self-care for me, though, is bringing myself back to the present moment when life seems too much and too overwhelming. If I find myself lost in thought, forgetting to function properly, the first thing I'll try to do is bring myself back to reality by purposefully thinking about and paying attention to what I'm doing at this particular moment. Feeling my breath, noticing my actions and how they feel rather than going on autopilot. If I'm looking at something, I try to actually see, notice some sort of detail which I could focus on, observe and think about its features. Think how the keyboard feels underneath my fingers, its texture and temperature as I'm typing this on my computer. Look at patterns and shapes of flowers, plants, moss. When I'm overwhelmed and I need some extra mental self-care, I try to think only about that. To me, mental self-care is the most important one, as I get overwhelmed very easily. On the physical level, I do try to move as much as I can throughout the day, going outside for long walks and stretching, while well, frolicking through fields and woodlands is my form of exercise. Taking care of my hair and skin is important, as these two were always very problematic throughout my life. I used to neglect myself quite a bit, as the result getting burnt out a lot. I'd go on entire day without moving, drinking water or brushing hair if I am too focused on completing a task. But I found that this never actually makes me more productive. Quite on the contrary, what makes me more productive is allowing myself to rest. I know that my body and mind don't function in overdrive mode, and I've learned that the hard way. I know that if my body and mind are taken care of, I will be more productive and focused throughout the day. If I forced myself to focus without taking care of myself mentally, I will probably just spend the day creating an illusion of being busy. Thank you so much for asking all of these questions. I will stop here today as I could probably go on and on talking about this and this will turn into a very long video. I will see you next time.